Eric, back in the naturopath. Thanks for coming back to my channel. Let's talk about some some different ways that you can actually stay on track with the Candida Crusher program or the Candida Cleanse diet, whatever type of diet that you're on or eating approach. Um, I made a few notes on my cheat sheet here. So let's start with the first one is making small goals first, okay? Don't try and achieve anything really big. Uh, you shouldn't even have that in your mind. A perfect example is, for example, what I'm doing right now, learning to play guitar, like classical guitar. So of course I want to play really nice pieces and complex pieces, but <clears throat> it ain't going to happen, not for a while, and I know that. It took me hell, it took me six weeks just to get used to the frets and some of the finger positions on the left hand, like nearly two months, and then just um, practicing with the right hand, you know, with fingering positions. I've got a great teacher. And basically he said, you need to really slow things down and break things down into tiny little pieces and understand that each piece will build upon something bigger. A bit like a Lego set, okay? You put one piece on another piece. Sure, you've got this beautiful big Star Wars spaceship you want to build, but you ain't going to do that in five minutes. It could take a week or two to build that. I've got a friend who's into that sort of stuff. These complicated, you know, Star Wars Lego thing takes time, okay? But as he said to me, when you've made a lot of these pieces over time, you understand how to put them together. Now, small goals first. <clears throat> Number one, small goals first, meaning most important thing you can probably do is to take a, a good look at what you're eating and how you're living and just make some changes in some areas that need it the most. And you will have heard this from friends or family or even your own inner voice may have said to you that, there's a specific thing you're doing that you know is pretty uncool and not, you know, going to push you in your goal. So that's the small thing you need to start first. Always remember small things when pushed through lead eventually to very powerful big things in the end. And that's how I expect my guitar playing to be in the end. Like I can play some beautiful pieces and I will in time, but I'm just playing Mary Had a Little Lamb at the moment. And I think you should do too. So don't sweat the small stuff, all right? Second one, get yourself organized. So this is important. Many patients are seen with problems, candida problems, often don't organize their pantry. They don't organize their refrigerator. They don't you know, organize themselves when they go shopping. So you need to organize yourself. You don't have to write down detailed plans and like really complicated menus and stuff like that, but just get yourself organized. Think about this. If you invited me to your place and I opened up the refrigerator, am I gonna be binning stuff? I'm probably going to take a big black plastic bag with me if I come to your place. Who knows? Hell, I might even take a skip with me. So that's what you've got to ask yourself. What am I going to bin before Eric turns up? All right. Third one, understand that sometimes when you really want to make changes in your own life, your own health, you need to talk to friends. And sometimes you might even have to fire a friend or get rid of something. One of my teachers um, always said to me that when we're unwell, we can be in relationships with other people who keep us on that level. So it could be a family or a friend or whatever. And sometimes we don't see that. And sometimes we've got to prune out what he called a bit of dead wood, chop something out. So you could have a negative friendship or a friendship that's based around alcohol or based around junk food. Or So you need to talk to this friend and work something out and say, hey, I'm making some changes. And if it ain't going to work, then you might have to fly solo for a while or find another friend who can support you on your goal. You know? So understand these relationships you've got with people because they can often keep you in that, that pool that you want to get out of. Right? <clears throat> Fourth one, look at your habits. Right? If you're going to achieve excellence in anything, um, I do look at small things, details, um, quite carefully because I realize that eventually they're going to form a huge big picture. So one of my favorite sayings um, that I've written in my book many times is people don't really decide on their future. Okay, they don't really decide on their future. They decide on the habits that they've got. Their habits are what they build up and then those habits will decide the future for that person. All right? I'm not talking about nuns with habits. I'm talking about, you know what I mean? So this is things that you need to learn to do is to understand the daily rituals and the things you do contribute to a picture one way or the other. And it's your choice. Next one, wake up early. And also try and go to bed by 9.30, 10. 
I find this important for people uh, when they're starting a program, particularly is to get into some regular kind of habit. Getting up early is a very smart move too, because it'll also power your body up, make it easier to maintain you know, daily rituals, like could be going for a walk, or could be going exercising, or it could be eating properly. Or, But getting up early is an important part of health, building health, Next one is self-discipline. That's really the key to self-mastery is self-discipline. Understanding that and learning to say no to that inner voice when it wants to grab, you know, wicked wings from Kentucky Fried Chicken or when it wants to grab a big double cheeseburger and a sundae that you say no. The more you can say no to these things, um, you'll find it easy, becomes easier and easier to say no in the future. And eventually you don't have to say no anymore because you bypass that stuff. All right. How many people do you know, for example, that don't eat any of that junk food at all? And that's because they may have a long time ago, but they said to themselves, no, it's time to stop this. Right? Let's have a look here. Next one. Okay. Never aim for zero mistakes because you're going to make plenty of mistakes. The thing is to look for action and not perfection doing something today even if you fudge it up or mess it up it's not important because there's always tomorrow and the following day right so never ever feel bad about stepping back every time you step forward you may step back this is quite common in the first few months is this you know backwards and forwards and then slowly you get there a few more steps back and this is particularly uh, apparent i've found with a lot of younger people who've got a bad gut problem they've been in a bad relationship there's a lot of changes need to be made before they stop this step process and they slowly move forward. All right? So again, it's important not to beat yourself up when you do step backwards and not always consistently forward. So never aim for perfection. All right, in that in that sense, everything you do has to be perfect because it's not going to be. Set goals. There's the next one. Every small step you take, or every goal that you set is a step further and further towards what you want to achieve. This is important one, number nine, reduce stress as much as possible. So conflict, you need to get away from conflict with people and allow plenty of time to do things for yourself. Don't push yourself. Sleep's the big one. Sleep really helps your body recover from stress. And this again ties in with what I said before, getting to bed on time. Because that will improve your adrenal health, that will improve your thyroid health, that will improve your endocrine or your hormonal health. And then when that improves, it helps the emotional part of a person to respond a lot better to changes and stress. And that will propel you towards good health. It's not just about what goes in here, it's about what goes in here and the emotional state too, right? And the last one is temptation. I can resist everything except temptation. There was a famous quote from Oscar Wilde. <clears throat> Isn't that a wonderful quote? Temptation is a quite a normal thing for people to experience in the first several months of a candida cleanse, especially when they've been sick for a long time. But slowly and surely, as the years go by, the temptations get less and less and health becomes more paramount. And a person will probably at that stage when they've got great health like I have, it doesn't matter if they eat a burger here or there or they have a Coke here or there because they're not going to enjoy it. And when they do have it, they usually feel sick when they've had it, like I do with soda drinks, and then they stop it. Somebody bought a bottle of Mountain Dew, I think it was, into this house about a week ago, and it was red stuff, red Mountain Dew. My son poured some in a glass. I looked at it and I said, man, this looks like transmission fluid. So, of course, I had it and I felt sick. It was like drinking some sort of a weird smelly toxic concoction so i spuked it all up in the sink and then i had a glass of water i thought how can people drink this stuff temptation not there anymore when you drink pure water you don't want to drink okay battery acid or transmission fluid anymore trust me thanks for tuning in